Chuck Holton once again with my friend Bob Cornuke, and we're here to talk about, Bob, your book, Tradition, Exploring the Roots of Church Traditions. We've got a copy of it right here, and I want you to tell me what this book is about. That book took me six and a half years to write. I traveled all across Europe, England, France, Germany, Luxembourg, and I went to amazing amount of churches, museums, libraries. And after six and a half years, my wife said to me, don't publish this book. Why? Because of how upset people are going to be by reading this, because mm -hmm. it really goes against a lot of people's belief structures, primarily the Roman Catholic Church has carried the football for, for a majority of uh, in the last 1,500 years. And so they're the ones that have most exposure. And then after the Reformation, I really go after and I show how the Protestant Church and the Mormon Church and a lot of others have made mistakes with tradition. Now, Jesus says your traditions will nullify the Word of God. And I'm not a bad guy wanting to poke the stick at other religions. I want to lift up the Bible for what it is. Mm -hmm. the, the God's holy Word. The Bible is God's revelation of Himself to man. God is the author. Salvation is the end. And truth without any mixture of error is the content. So the Bible is and shall remain the supreme standard by which we should live, how we should tithe, how we should work, how we should raise our children. But if you're a student of the Bible, you need to use it as it was intended, as God's word literally breathed upon its pages. So when I start seeing people stray off the rails of, the, of scripture and they start going to the weeds of just tradition, we need to go back and say, let's get this into the wind. Now, the Catholic Church, I want to give them full credit because what they did is the Catholic Church has done more to preserve ancient documents than any other faith structure. They were amazing. Where in the Middle Ages, they started hospitals. They were the first one to start hospitals. They started universities. So the world, and just today, with all their philanthropic work around the world, selflessly going out in the most impoverished areas and taking missionaries out there, we got to give them credit. But during the Middle Ages, let me tell you, it just was a, a big stinky mess because what happened in the Middle Ages, everything was steeped on fear. Fear was the driving force for every decision. What do I mean by fear? Well, if you lived in the 13th century and 14th century, let's just say, to use that as an example, here's what your life would be. You were afraid of everything. If, a, if thunder went off in the distance or a clap of lightning, you would go to the church cowering in fear praying before the altar. If you lived in, in a village, it's probably surrounded by forest. You wouldn't venture within five miles of your home. Satan was in everything. The devil was in everything. The wind blowing by, a, a spider, whatever. They, they were afraid of everything. And so even the stories the old men told about with Drax, about them grabbing little kids and hauling them off. This is a time that, that, that traditions really got started. And it was pretty much based on the fear factor. And we need to get away from that and follow what God's word really says. So list off some of the traditions that you tackle in this book. Well, we go for everything from the first century to, let's say, how did they come up with this concept of purgatory? Purgatory is a halfway place. You're going to go, a, and when you die, you don't go to heaven, you don't go to hell, you go to purgatory. And there the refining fires of purgatory will burn away your sins. Now, we don't know how long that is. We don't know where that is. But people believe that there is a purgatory. And they will pay money to get their relatives out of purgatory in mass, or they'll take the money and they'll get themselves. That's why we see these gangster movies. Mm -hmm. They give millions of dollars to the church. That's to get them out of purgatory. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, with his blood wiped away our sins. And if we believe in, in, in Jesus and we believe in that, that so that's antithetical to why to what Jesus died sure. for, for with his blood. Yeah, what's the point of Jesus what's, what's dying the point? if you still have to pay for it? And the Pope could dole out these things. There's a thing called the treasury of merit. If people get these great blessings from saints, 
that the Pope can sell these blessings. When the saints die, he has them in the treasure merit, and he's an executor of these great deeds, and he can sell those, and that's what happened with Martin Luther. They were, they were indulgences, and Martin mm -hmm. Luther says, wait a second, this is not right. Mm -hmm. And so when Tietzel went through and he was selling all these indulgences, that, that was one of the, the impetus for the Reformation. Right. What was that? Right. So you, you talk about those. What about some of the sites, the biblical archaeological stuff? That you, do you cover that in here? I, I go through all. I go through a lot of biblical sites. I, I go through where people say certain things. I, I talk about how other religions have spawned, because mm -hmm. we talk about. See, there was more people killed by the popes and all the Caesars combined. But yet, yet we go through scripture, we read Martin Luther, for instance, everybody reveres him. He was the biggest anti-Semite around. He wanted to kill all the Jews, take their properties. Calvin, he preached a sermon this guy didn't like, put a letter on his pulpit, and then guess what happened? The guy gets killed by, Calvin has him tortured and then crucified. In those days, it was that spirit of just, of just fear and death, and that was that toxic soup that was in the Middle Ages that really changed during the Reformation, it bifurcated right there in the Reformation. And we had we have a whole new way of thinking about the word grace, for instance, mm -hmm. versus the word the word the word repent, for instance, in the Latin Vulgate Bible, the Roman Catholic Church Bible, it says do penance. That was written by Jerome in the fourth century. Then we have a guy coming along named Erasmus. I think it was in the 16th century, around the 1500s, right in there, 16th century. Erasmus knew what Greek was. And he's reading the Bible and he's translating it. And he sees this, this says this in the Roman Catholic Church. And then he looks over here at the original Greek and it says metanoia, which means repent. The, the, in the Catholic Church, it's do penance. You have to Those do things two different again. things. It's They're... completely different things. Right. So we have to realize, of course, we have a love, a patriotic alliance to our denomination, to our church, to our, our pastors, to our priests. But let's get serious. There has to be a time when you come down and say, I'm going to fall on where the Bible is, what is Bible saying me, and not what some middle-aged cleric that said that that spun it off into a money-making scheme for the church. Fascinating. So what kind of feedback have you gotten? I imagine that this has been controversial. What, tell me about some of the feedback you've got. I didn't even want to publish this book because I knew I was going to get just an, slain on the altar of discontent <laughs> by people. But what I, and it's, the opposite has happened. I had a lady that was head of the, the diocese, I think up in Canada, and she said, She's completely now into a Bible-believing, Bible-following church. Wow. And she said, thank you. I got a letter recently from a guy from Bulgaria who is a professor. Over there. He is actually he was the dean of the university. And he said, the only thing wrong with your book is that it should be leather-bound in every library in the world because no one has ever tackled it. Because who wants to get annihilated? See, scholars want three things. They want to be published. They want to have a promotion. And they want to have prestige. Mm -hmm. And if you go against any of those, your career's over. It's a deal killer. Yeah. A if you, career if you deal killer. speak up against any of those traditions. Any, even if you just say there's a Noah's Ark mm -hmm. in the university system, you're gone. Mm -hmm. So there, it's a three-legged stool. So people, scholars want to stay in the safe harbor of mutual consent, and they don't want to go off into the choppy waters of... Uh, of argument for argument's sake. Mm -hmm. They will not go out and have, that's why we don't, our students today and the consuming public today in churches, they're not getting the truth because no one is willing to say, here's the 60 pound gorilla in the room, all right? There's nothing in scripture that talks about purgatory, mm -hmm. nothing. It was invented. Pope Gregory in the fifth century then became very popular in the eighth century when all the knights and the nobles would have their airhead kids, these knights would go off and get arrested in France, for instance, or Germany. And then the parents would go down and say, I want to get little, I want to get my son out of jail. And they said, well, you pay us money and we'll get him out. So they pay money. Then the Pope gets a hold of that and says, wait a second, I can get people out of purgatory by getting money. And that's how it starts. Money, control, and power has been the poison that, that, is, that has really harmed the church throughout history. No question. And it still does today, without a doubt. Well, that's amazing, and I definitely am going to read the book. Thank you for bringing me a copy. Folks, I recommend 
Uh, you pick up Tradition. If you want to get your copy, how do they do that? Base Institute, B-A-S-E Institute. They can get a copy or they can go on khouse.org, just letter right. khouse.org and or baseinstitute.org. You can it, get it either place. It's got two things that make it good for me, large print and pictures. I did so, that just for you. Thank and, you. And, and a you. box of crayons goes with the, your copy. Did, okay, did you, but you said it took six years? Six and a half said, years. So you wrote it very slowly. That's good because I don't read very fast. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, the book is called Tradition. Highly recommend you get it. And thank you, Bob. Appreciate Thanks. you being here. Appreciate it. Thank you.